you fly at the speed of light, we will go around the Earth seven and a half times in one second. If we maintain that same speed, we can get to the Moon in 1.3 seconds. And then we can go all the way to Mars in 4.2 minutes. Just enough time to make some noodles and a cup of coffee if you're fast. And if we carry on through the asteroid belt, maintaining our speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, we will reach the gas giant Jupiter in about 43 minutes. More than enough time to eat noodles, drink tea, and play a few games of blackjack. From here it will take us another 86 minutes to get to Saturn. To fly from Earth to the end of the solar system past Pluto, will take four and a half hours at the speed of light. That's enough time to watch Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. We maintain the speed and it takes us four years to get to the nearest star. Four birthdays, four Christmas dinners. Think of a job or something you have done for four years to get perspective on the time you're spending on board this ship. If we want to fly from one end of the galaxy to another end of the galaxy, that would take 100,000 years. And that means if people on this spaceship cross to the age of 100, our flight will take 1,000 generations of people getting born and growing old on board this spaceship before we reach our destination. Finally, we reached the end of the Milky Way. 100,000 years of flying at incredible speeds. To get us to the next galaxy, we have to fly for two and a half million years at this speed. We have to wait for another 25,000 generations to come and go before we get to our destination. Now we will attempt to journey to the edge of the universe, which will take 46 billion light years. We will go through 460 million generations of 100 year old people before we get there, at which point we could possibly discover the multiverse. Astronomers estimate that the observable universe has more than 100 billion galaxies. Our own Milky Way is home to around 300 billion stars. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. And 75% of the stars in our galaxy have planets around them, and many are in the habitable zone. Considering that a teaspoon of sand has more atoms than all the stars in the observable universe, just imagine all the spontaneous chemical reactions happening with all the chemicals on all the planets surrounding all the stars. And then consider that the building blocks for life, such as amino acids and proteins, can spontaneously form in certain environments. Then one has to consider the possibility that life on other planets is mathematically inevitable.